Today I'm going to share with you the right way to turn photos to paintings of any kind of any creative style that you wish using generative fill and also I'm going to share with you an action that's going to make the process much simpler. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the magical world of Photoshop and if you wish to go ahead and download this photo and follow along, you know what to do. Check the links in the description. As you can see, the resolution is very, very high. I recommend working with a lower resolution because anyway, the generations of generative fill are lower in resolution. So let's go to image, image size and we're going to be working with 2000 pixels width. You want to make sure this is checked so that aspect ratio is maintained and also resampling is checked. Automatic is fine. Hit OK. Press Ctrl or Command 0 to fit the canvas to the screen. Let's talk about the concept. When you directly use generator fill, it is not going to resemble the image. We have to work with transparencies. For example, if we press Ctrl or Command A to select it all, and then if we click on generator fill in the contextual taskbar, by the way, if you cannot see it, go to window. You want to make sure you come down and check contextual taskbar. There you go. You will see that now. Now let's click on generate a fill and let us type in oil painting. Hit generate. Now, as you can see, these are absolutely unrelated. So how do we tell Photoshop to generate something, but keep an image as a reference? There's a way and that is transparent selections. Let's delete this layer and this time let us make a 50% selection. Now you can do it with the quick mask mode, but with channels, it is easier to understand. Let's go to the channels panel. Again, if you cannot see it, go to window and you want to make sure channels is checked. Now let us create a new alpha channel by clicking on this button. Let's fill it with 50% gray. Click on the foreground color icon. Set the brightness to about 50. This is 50% gray. Hue and saturation at zero. Hit OK. That's fine. And press Alt Backspace or Option Delete. Now based on this, we will make a selection by holding the control or command and clicking on the thumbnail of this alpha channel. Now we have a 50% selection. Let's go back and select RGB. Come back to layers. Now when you hit generate a fill and type in oil painting, hit generate. Do keep in mind when working with channels, the brighter the area, the more that area would be selected. Since we painted it with 50% gray and made a selection based on that, it was selected 50%. And now as you can see, they are much closer to the image. First one, second one, and third one. Now we can make the generation more closer to the image by selecting less or in other words, making the selection more transparent. Let us name this 50% of the image. Let's turn this layer off, select the background layer. Let's go back to channels and name this one 50 because that's what it actually is. Let's create a new one. Click on this button and this one, let's name it 20. And we're going to fill it with 20% brightness. Now click here. Let's set the brightness to 20 and then press Alt Backspace or Option Delete to fill it that way. Now make a selection based on it by holding the control or command and click on the thumbnail. Now it's going to show you this warning. The marching ants won't be visible because the selection is so transparent. Hit OK. Do keep in mind the selection is still active. If you go back to layers, you can click on generate a fill because there is an active selection going on. By the way, inside channels, let's select RGB again. Selection is still active. Now click on generate a fill. We're going to type in oil painting again and click on generate. Now, as you can see, the generations are actually very, very close, too much closer to the image. And we can say that it is 80% of the image. Why 80? Because we altered only 20% of it and made a selection with 20% opacity. I hope it makes sense. Now that you get the concept, doesn't it give you an idea to generate alterations of different levels and combine them together? For example, this is 80% closer to the image. So we can use it for the hair, maybe for the clothes. And this is only 50% closer to the image. So we can use it for the background because they're so creative. Only if there was an easy and automatic way of doing it. Actually, there is. Thanks to Russell Brown, one of the big guys at Adobe. He was actually the guy who convinced Adobe to buy Photoshop. Working with Adobe for decades, one of the most creative people I've met, the genius, had already explained it six months ago. That's where I learned about it and also created an action. So you can download it from here. I'm also going to link his video in the description so you can directly watch that as well. Once you download the action, open up the actions panel. If you cannot see it, go to window and then actions. Inside of that, to install the action, click on this hamburger icon right there, load actions, just locate the action and click on open. Alternatively, you can also double click on the action to load it. Inside of the action, you have all different kinds of styles already built in. Let us play the oil painting action and just click on the play button. That's all. Now, as you can see, it has generated all different levels of closeness to the original image. 
let me share that with you. So here's one, which is only 40% of the image. Here is one, which is 50, 60, 70, and 80. Now you can combine all of them and create something awesome. This is how I would go about it. Let's turn off all of them. By the way, I would save this. It's, it in itself is an amazing creation. Let's open up the properties by clicking on this button right here. If you cannot see the properties, go to window. You know what to do. You want to make sure properties is checked. I would actually cycle through different options to see if anything is actually usable. So for this one, we can use this for some parts of the background. So let's name this BG1. Let's open up the second one. Let's cycle through different options first, second, and third. I actually like the third one for some parts of the background as well. So let's use that. Let's name it BG2. Let's go to the next one, turn it on, first, second, and third. Actually, we can use this for parts of the hair and maybe the clothes. So let's name it subject S1. The next one, let's turn it on, first, second, third. Now for the style I'm going for, we can definitely use this one for parts of the face and this one for parts of the hair. Let's make a copy of this one by pressing Ctrl or Command J. Let's select this one right here and we're going to use this for the hair. And let's look at the last one. I'm not sure whether it's going to be usable or not. First, second and third. No. So let us delete this layer. So select it, press the delete key, it will be gone. Now you can generate a couple times, look at your options, but we're gonna go with what we have. So first of all, let's turn everything off except for the last one. Let's keep it in the background. On top of that, let us turn on BG2. Let's select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I, and let's take the brush with white as the foreground color. You can always press D to set the foreground and the background color to defaults and just paint couple areas where you want to modify it. Actually, we ended up fully painting. That's fine too. This just means we don't really need this one. Let's go to S1. Wow, we can definitely use the subject areas. So select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I. Let's get back some of the subject areas. Now let's turn on this one. See if the face is any better or the subject areas are any better. You can combine different styles as well. Let's select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I. Let's try painting parts of the face. For this one, let's turn it on maybe parts of the hair, the subject, select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I, paint a little bit of that area, a little bit of this area. Now this is a wonderful painting, but we have lost the face. But before we recover it, let us fix the areas that we don't like. So select the lasso tool right here. This area looks a bit awkward, so we're gonna select that area. And again, simply use Generate Fill, click on Generate, and it's creating a layer here, so cancel. Select the topmost layer, click on Generate. So I generated twice and this one works better. Now let's recover the face. So for the face, whatever you do with generator fill will alter the face in some way. It doesn't retain the characteristics of the face. So we have to do that kind of thing manually and we have to get back to our old granddaddy filters. First of all, select the topmost generative layer, hold the shift key, select the bottommost one and then press Ctrl or Command G. Let's name this Gen Paint. Now click on the mask button right here, take the brush, with black as the foreground color, just bring back the eyes and the mouth and the characteristics of the face. Now the face is looking very realistic, so here's how you make it artistic. Make a copy of the subject layer, name it Paint Filter. Let's go to Filter, Convert for Smart Filters. Hit OK, so that whatever filter we apply, we can change the values later. Let's go to Filter and then Filter Gallery. By the way, you can also consider using parametric filters in Photoshop Beta, but then again, it's not perfect yet. So right in here, I've already created two filters, so let me create them from scratch for you. So we have different ones like Artistic, Brush Strokes, Distort right here. So first of all, we're gonna go to Brush Strokes and we'll choose something like Angled Strokes. You can play with the settings, change the stroke length, the sharpness and everything. I don't want any sharpness here. Let's keep it this way and you can stack different filters. So on top of it, I can click on the plus button. And for this one, if you're gonna go to Artistic and choose a watercolor, I'm gonna leave everything just the way it is. Hit OK. And there you have it blending in. Now I would recommend going back to the mask, take the brush and with the white as the foreground color, decrease the flow to about five or six percent. Just paint back in some of these areas. Get the flow to about 10% now. You can always go back if something is not working the way you want it to work. This pretty much looks okay to me and there you have your painting. Now just before recording this video, I did another version and I felt that that result kind of was a little better than this one. So let me share that with you. It's the exact same thing. So here's what we created. 
here's what I had created before. So both are different ones. You can choose what you like. You can generate one more time. That's the thing with generative fill. You can keep on generating and it just is limitless. So let's go with this. It's the exact same thing as you can see. And now it is time for us to upscale. As you can see, the resolution is not pretty high. It's very low. Now, just in a previous video, we talked about some of the best free upscalers. You can check it out later. So to upscale it, let's export it first. Go to File, Export, Export As. And I'm going to set the export width to about 1000 only so that we have more scope for upscaling and the generation was already even lower resolution so let's keep it that way everything else is fine you can see the settings right here click on export let's name it oil painting export click on save now for upscaling i'm going to use this free application called upscale with a y it's free and open source you can check the code if you want to and also there are other platforms which we have talked about in this video in case this doesn't work or in case if you don't like it let's drag and drop our photo right here and there are different models that we can use so I'm going to use this Ultra Mix Balanced. As you can see, the resulting resolution would be this much. Click on Upscale. It uses your computer power, so nothing on the cloud. And there you go. It's done. Before, after. Pretty amazing upscaling. Especially if you look at the strokes in the background. Here's the before. And here is the after. So darn good. Have a look right here. Before, after. Great. So that's how to turn photos to paintings of any style that you like. And you can get as creative as you want. For example, you can just select the subject very roughly, invert the selection, press Ctrl Shift I, Command Shift I, or click on this button in the contextual taskbar. Click on Generate a Fill. You can also create a transparent selection up to you, full selection up to you, and type in Flower Garden Oil Painting. I generated just twice and look at the results. These are just <laughs> incredible, aren't they? For example, I like this one, but I don't like the hair right here. I can select just that area and change it. I like this one. I don't like a particular area. We can modify it. The creativity is absolutely limitless right here. The secret to generate a fill using your image as a reference is transparent selections. The lesser you select, the closer your generation will be to the image. And then you can combine different levels of generation to create the style of your choice. I hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tips tricks or tutorials i would like to take this moment to thank all of these nice and amazing people for supporting pix imperfect on patreon and helping keep pix imperfect free for everybody forever thank you so much for watching i'll see you in my next one till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating